All right, guys. Um, just want to talk about a bit about decision making and perspective. Um, one of the things I push quite a lot is for people to make their own decisions, um, and the reason for that is there's a strange occurrence now where an agenda's pushed this fact, or what somebody believes or chooses to believe becomes fact because they they're dictating this fact and. It's quite weird because I see it even in the business environment, um, which you used to get for, for, sort of from the military, where you're missing a radio operator, give somebody the radio, never operate the radio in their life, and say, You're now the radio operator, you need to get it working. That's where some of that comes from. Now, that obviously, the response would normally be, I haven't worked a radio, a radio, I've got no idea how to do it, but the fact is it's dumped on you, sort it out. And that's been quite a common theme in business, um, especially in the UK, I don't know if it's the same in other countries, but it's definitely been there a lot more in probably the last 10 years. Um, and I probably would say a lot of that also pushes onto the Great Resignation. Because as people filtered out, um, business leaders, as they like to call themselves, started dumping responsibilities of the people they're short onto the people that still had. And then obviously that then compounds the problem, makes it worse and increases the resignation. Um, but a lot of this comes back to the way people think. It's the same as positive thinking. It's okay to, posit to have possible th pos positive thoughts. But you've also got to have um, problems and solutions. Not just go, well, I don't want to hear the negative stuff. Well, the business is going bust. That's not just a negative, that's a reality check that you need to do something and do it quick. That That is a reality check piece. Um, but in the mindset of some individuals and some businesses, that wouldn't be seen as a, the way forward. Um, but a lot of these decisions would actually come down to them to actually take some ownership as well as leadership instead of just telling people they lead. Um, now the reason it's sort of relevant is I think over the last 15 years it's become more day to day um, and much harder to challenge. So as a good example the RAF are currently looking at um, positive discrimination cases at the minute. Now a positive discrimination case is where you've given somebody a job that um, over somebody else because of their background, whether they're disabled, whether they're from a different uh, demographic, whether a f female over a male, all that sort of stuff because it's very rare I would say that you get a male over a female anywhere so um, but may occur but they're having to look into it. Now, a lot of that stuff come in um, probably in the 90s. Because I remember changes to like the height of police officers, for example, because it was to take into account um, the Asian demographic, which are generally shorter. Give me another 20 years, there won't be much difference. Because, I mean, I know being out in the Philippines, a lot of the guys I know are actually much taller than me. Um, they play basketball a lot. And the diets have changed over the last... 30 years so they are on more of a western diet higher protein etc um, so they are getting taller but the whole point was there was reasons the height and that was there in the first place and it was sort of reduced um, to take into account they needed more uh, people from a different background um, although they sort of sidestepped a lot of the other issues that are predominantly the main issues that we still suffer today because they get ignored um, I'm not getting into it because it's not not what the discussion is about but it's not a quick fix and nobody seems to actually want to fix it properly everyone wants an easy solution well, there isn't one it is a generational change probably three or four generations to get that where everybody integrates or it's not an easy solution um, but you'll find that the stuff piggybacked on this like there's a lot more now um, where somebody will push something as a fact knowing it's not. Um, I look at British politics 
Um, and you have to question whether some of these people that are supposed to be political leaders know they're lying or as thick as they are. Or, sorry, as thick as I think they are um, to make such a mistake. Because they're either lying to people's faces and it's that thick skinned or they're stupid. It's, it's one of the two. There's no third option. It's one of the two. And. Um, it, it is getting worse because this is why you start to see um, like looking at the conservative change I'm sitting there looking at you've got two people that are looking to replace Boris Boris I wouldn't trust proving that he is unreliable untrustworthy uh, incompetent etc etc and then there's two people come up which uh, I can't even say much better or a little bit better because in all honesty it's a choice between bad or worse but it's it's a lot around the the facts and the truth because you don't get it you know it's all it's all false speech and I heard one today where they were talking about uh, what's the, oh there is another solution for the um, uh, the the living crisis at the minute economic living crisis piece uh, but we'll wait for the next prime minister really L taxpayer is the one that's concerned L taxpayer wants a solution today you're costing them money otherwise it's just yet another oh we'll promise we'll do something and then we'll see what happens so um, moving away from the politics side I think a lot of this changed in the 80s and I think it sort of piggybacked on where they realised because you look at everything that's driven by consumerism it's everywhere um, I'm not just talking about things like being on YouTube which is obviously consumer driven the uh, the strictness is around advertisers you know in the at the end of the day what makes money um, that's where the focus is so if you go down that route of selling your soul um, you're more likely to get more advertising more likely to get um, better income etc etc but for me I can't do it I, I just I find it very difficult um, I mean I look at the world as it is at the minute and I see we import too much stuff from Asia. I see we buy too much stuff from Amazon. I see we have a lot of excess that often isn't fit for purpose. But that sort of doesn't get covered. It's always selling the next thing, the next product, the next idea, the next um, election. Um, now, I've got to admit, cutting off from consumerism is quite difficult but it's something I'm looking at more and more uh, simply because it's sort of got down to that political point where even myself I've got a question do I need to be doing some of the stuff I do don't get me wrong I mean here I am with my uh, super dry shirt super dry shirt based on Japanese stuff I owned by a guy in Cheltenham in the UK and the shirt's probably made in Bangladesh um, that's it's all pure marketing um, now I don't even know the link between how the owner uh, got from the brand idea to market um, but its concept is predominantly Japanese yet how much Japanese stuff is actually involved in it probably not a lot but I do like the products. I've got to admit the shirts are good and I do, I've got probably about 20 of them. Um, but I'm starting to move away from that stuff. I mean, it's, it's like the house. Um, I'm expecting my costs to start coming down um, year on year now because uh, we've, took, we've took all the financial hits. Um, still got a conservatory to build. Don't get me wrong. I think though that's that's my office space I currently don't need it yet so I think I'll put solar panels in next so we've got solar electric and then later on when the 
the roof comes in well let's just say roof solar panels up there won't be that many probably about four then this area here that's open will have solar panels across the conservatory roof then there'll be another roof coming in along this section here uh, which is probably another three panels which is more than enough for the house um, it won't look too garish either because, simply because it's all on the roof um, you probably probably have to be about 80 feet away to even notice they're on the roof because I know from the water heater you've got to be over there somewhere to actually see it um, but I'm looking at energy reduction on costs because obviously now there's the big scaremongering piece around the energy usage and we're looking at a winter of discontent let's be honest um, if they don't sort the gas out we've got problems although I, I did see there's some gas coming in from Australia um, but it's a bit weird because that's when you start to see some of the political stuff that's affects and uh, nations which actually should be against the um, security of a nation you know in my personal view I mean Spain for example has a lot of sunlight and if you look over here I don't know if you can see it all along the top of the the, the high-rise blocks where yeah right on the top there you'll see rows of solar water heaters now I would say your hot water is probably about a third or a quarter of your electric bill. So that's free hot water up there. Um, I mean, that's five, 10, 15, probably about 40 solar water heater panels just on those blocks there. Um, I'm not sure if it's compulsory yet in Spain, but I think it should be on all new builds that they come with solar water heaters. And I do think they should have at least 40% solar electric as well. And the reason I say that is you get to a point where you're not looking to sell it back to the grid, but use it. So I'd say 40%, you're probably going to use it, you know, during the day, um, where you, you max it out. You may end up selling it back to the grid at a low value. And there's, that's another political thing. There's a load of um, people further. Um, inland <laughs> I say inland because of miles away um, they were encouraged to buy um, all this solar um, solar farm basically and millions of euros and then the tariffs got dropped out of it and they've lost a fortune um, yet yeah, the government had encouraged them to do it not a good, good place to be this is why I look at this and think do that that's going to be my energy uh, for the house I'm not looking at making money on it if it covers the energy for the house um, that's good enough for me um, but if it just covers it during the day that's fine for me because when I'm home it means you've got the, um, the aircon on during the day okay we may have to pay it at night but temperatures drop at night as well um, and I've gone off on a tangent haven't I um, <clears throat> but back on track that's the sort of focus I'm doing myself is I'm, I'm looking at it and like I said there you know people go get solar sell it to the, the grid and I'm like is it worth selling to the grid I mean maintain and um, reduce my bills that's that that's more important it's the same as um, paying the mortgage off um, I want to pay that off I'm, I mean to be fair it's probably a third of my wages a month at the minute um, as I look to get rid of my mortgage and I'll keep hammering that, hammering it, hammering it, hammering it to get to get rid of it. Um, and once I'm happy at a certain level, that's when I'll pay for the conservatory. Um, because it's not urgent. It's not urgent. This is the other thing. Is I mean, I was, I was with um, Brian, Brian and his wife this week. Um, uh, last week, sorry. Um, they they popped in. Um, and they were on about their son was on about oh do this dad do this <laughs> it's like hang on that's that's nine thousand it's four thousand it's like yeah do it do it when you want to do it do it when you need it don't rush it we got the house where we want it you know we've got the the window sorted out because the other ones weren't great these are more insulated it's re reframed the house into the the format we want you know because obviously we moved 
the door from there to, and put a new one in here and put a bigger window in there because that's the layout we want. It's sort of got to that point where we're now starting to get move into tidying up, getting the render sorted, getting rid of all these rails. Uh, we've got the marble down there for it um, and just tidying it up bit by bit. But because we're now looking at an environment where cost of living is going up, I start to look at how do I keep my costs down. And like I said, you'll get a lot of push to go, go 100% solar, do this, do that. Uh, fuel price going up, go electric, da da da, push, 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 buy something new, buy something new. Where what I'm looking at, if I can get 40, 50% of my power up there, that, that makes it um, fairly insular. You know, the prices shoot up, not going to affect me too much. Um, the same as once the office is done. Gives me a proper base to work, get out the kids' way, um, and I've got my own little space to work, but it's not urgent. Taking 25% off the mortgage, more important, because as the interest rates start to go up, my more, my payments have sort of hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Um, it keeps it and starts bringing it down, um, which is where I, I want to get to, where we've paid off a large chunk of it. But where do you hear this advice? Are the banks telling you, be aware that you, there's a risk in mortgage rate changes? Um, in theory, there should be an economic injection um, where the interest rates shouldn't be going up, they should actually be coming down. But many of the interest rates haven't really recovered um, since since 2008. So I wouldn't be surprised if some do go up a little bit. And it's we're in a very very precarious environment right now because unless they cut the costs to encourage um, investment in the state state projects like big housing developments, uh, road infrastructure, bridges, uh, airports, all that, all the big spend items that actually generate work for a lot of people, which then goes into the economy, I think about three or four times, because obviously you employ the people for the state, the state employ private contractors, private contractors and state spend money at the local supermarkets, spend it at local shops, go out and spend it on holiday, etc., etc., and then it, it's, it runs through the economy and re-injects money back into the economy to create a bit of a stimulation. Um, but my personal, I was saying to my wife earlier, problem you get is I think the UK the housing market is overvalued. Um, and it's quite funny when we talk about it as well because one of the arguments to get back is about, well, the cost, um, if it wasn't the cost of the property, it wasn't, if the demand wasn't there, the cost of the properties wouldn't be there. A lot of people don't have other options. This is the thing, it's the same as um, when we bought this house. Um, I'll, you know, it's probably worth double what I paid for it. But at the same time, a lot of these properties, not these new ones at the back, a lot of these properties dropped in value during 2008, 2000, you know, the recession, um, and didn't really recover. I mean, I've seen houses, on a say, on that beachfront there, that were worth up to 240, 260,000, and then selling for 130,000. And a lot of them sort of got stuck because the debt was over 200,000, but the property's only worth 130,000 now. The UK um, has managed to keep the market high. It didn't let it re settle down. Now, this is where I think Spain is probably a little bit more on the right path in the sense of, everyone, everyone seems to have a second property here, bizarrely. Um, but, but the point being is, like our neighbours here, these are their holiday homes, they all have um, properties in, in the cities. Um, this is the holiday locations, but, but the point is, the market is not driven by um, building up the, the, the income from it or 
uh, push for the valuation on the property you know in the sense of you've got more investment capital you've got more of this you've got more of that it's driven by actually using the places um, which also sort of shows where a lot of them don't get modernized because like a lot of these properties will be empty after probably starting the next couple of weeks and when they empty out um, they'll stay empty till next summer a lot of these properties don't go up in value but there's been at the end of the um, COVID period there's a lot of injection in property developments for the cities because the cities are suffering with a lack of housing um, that's why some places are a bit funny about Airbnb etc it's not just the noise it's the fact that people are struggling to live in the areas that they work in you know, or they're born in you know so the um, they have tried to cap rental markets not on the coast as much well, too much but mainly in like say Madrid Barcelona etc where property is in demand um, and it may seem a bit more of a socialist view but at the same time it helps stabilize the economy it keeps the um, the need for a wage rise to be less because your cost of living is less and that's that, this is where I think the UK has got out of sync because the cost of living's kept going up yet the wages haven't kept up and it's like where they complain about the rail strike guys at the minute um, myself I've got to look at it properly you know because you'll get one view from a politician and one view from a transport union um, but I know when you look at government sectors different ones you can see they'll push say a nurse out there as low, you know low income blah 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 same as the teacher and, and they'll include teacher assistants in the same wage brackets but they don't include things like um, the, the extra bonuses they get on once you do training courses, they don't put in the, the rates that are associated with nursing, which um, increase your salaries as well. It's always the basics, uh, but not, not having a jab at these guys, but they don't even mention the chief execs and the, the higher ends that are actually where an excessive amount of money goes. Same as when they move off and get golden handshakes and stuff not really dealt with because it's a phenomenal amount of money up there so you've just got to look at it and think what is the real problem which gets back to the original point of you've got to think about this stuff yourself because um, I mean it's a bit like me having a place in Spain it's assumed you must have a lot of money you must have this blah, blah. the property here is probably half the cost of what I'd buy for similar um, in many parts of the UK that's the reality of it so I keep my costs down in the UK and spend them here develop the property here because once I get to a certain point I'll be out here full time you know once the office is built start doing a lot of work online and pulling out here full time house is finished mortgage gone all that sort of stuff your cost of living just drops. Because um, I've had a couple of friends on about making lots of money. The problem with making money is you're constantly increasing your workload. Me, it's more about getting to a point of investment funds, house paid, lower day to day costs, do a bit of um, surveying works, do a bit of asset surveying, do a bit of data manipulation and survey data a um, bit of CAD drawings that sort of stuff from Spain um, and the argument of oh we, we need you in the UK sort of gets offset by the fact I don't need as much money so I sort of throw onto the table instead of me coming to the UK just reduce my salary when it won't come at all better deal for everybody I think But yeah, just just keep an eye on perspectives because a lot of them aren't true. A lot of them aren't 
uh, comprehensive. They're often down one path. And you'll find about a lot of these leaders that um, they like to promote themselves as or successful business people. They don't really talk about their hurdles. They don't really talk about the bits of luck sometimes, because sometimes it is luck. You hit something and it just works. Um, and it's not about being, oh, I'm so fantastic, I'm great at this. A lot of the time it can be luck. The, another one is perseverance. Um, the amount of times I've had to reset stuff over the years, have a rethink, come in at a different angle, scrap it and do something else, um, is a constant. Because some stuff works, some stuff doesn't, some stuff may work but takes longer to get it going. But the whole point of it is, it's not always straightforward. You know, and this is the problem where you get a person's book or whatever, they don't talk about the, the multiple directions, they all talk about the bits that they want to talk about, not the bits that they had a complete failure on or had a complete meltdown about. Um, they often don't want to get anywhere near that stuff, yet that's part of it, because it's when you fall down, it's been able to pick yourself back up. Also looking at yourself and thinking, is it me, is it them, is it what? What, was, what isn't working, all of that is part of it. Because you know, not, not everything works for everybody. Not everything's straightforward. Not everything in the UK will work in Spain in the same way as not everything in Spain will work in the UK. See, for me, business-wise, I don't, I don't want to do restaurants and stuff. I've got to admit, that's just not for me. I can make more money uh, online doing other stuff but one of the key things about um, leaving the other firm was it gave me time because that's one thing that I was robbed of uh, for a few years is time because this is where the other stuff comes from it's having time to think time to um, work out where we're going next um, which I've got back now thankfully so I'm, I'm, I am expecting things to start moving forward in stages. And I say stages because when you're paying massive chunks off of a property, um, you've got to watch, watch your pennies. You, and if I can generate some extra income from somewhere else, it will still be hammered on the same thing, which will restrict its growth a little bit. But getting those, getting the mortgage gone is the key, key to everything for me at the minute. Um, and we'll see where we get. But that's the key thing. It's reassess. Look at what people tell you and then think about it. Don't assume from one perspective it's correct. It's the same as when people um, talk about how people should live. You've got to look at the fact of, do you want to be like them? Because sometimes they're obnoxious. Um, because everything becomes obsessive about themselves, um, which for me isn't where I like to be. I like to be more sympathetic to other people. I like having things like empathy. Um, I like helping others if I can. So, so the point being is not everything is about, oh, I want to be this way, I want to be this, I want to be, you know, dating 50 women, traveling the world, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot more to it. But some of that develops over time as well with experience and as, as you mature. Because um, when you're younger, you want, you want that sort of lifestyle. As you get older, you start to look at the world differently. You know, you, it's not like you're, you, like for example, you may want a slower pace of life, but you may want a different type of life. You know, for me, I'd like to go and do more photography. I'd like to do uh, more vlogs. I'd like to sp spend more time traveling. But I got to get to a point where my cost of living is significantly reduced so that I can say I'm taking two years out or whatever and see where I go after that. Perspective. Thanks for watching.